express lanes. The old limit was $13.95. Now, one driver told us it's not worth it for him to even use these lanes. It's a bit much. We moved here from Illinois two years ago, and uh, the tollway system there, was, it got really expensive. Yeah. Officials uh, say the South Metro Express lanes in Henry and Clayton counties have eased traffic congestion since the lanes opened more than a year ago. Now new developments. More than a dozen dogs rescued in Georgia now have new homes. We showed you these pictures last week where 32 dogs were rescued from a house in Macon and they came to the Atlanta Humane Society in Alpharetta. The Humane Society told us today that 14 dogs were adopted and three more are still available. The remainder of the dogs are still there recovering. School shootings, terror attacks, and natural disasters new at four local counties touting brand new training unlike anything we've seen here in Georgia, and it's all to keep you safe. Plus, this landscaper was robbed and attacked while doing his job. The quick actions from police that landed three men behind bars. I'm Justin Farm at Channel 2 Action News. Urging people not to take the law into their own hands. Their advice comes after a landscaper who fought back against brazen thieves managed to keep his equipment. Channel 2's Mike Bichinick is live on Old Alabama Road in Roswell. Mike, you tracked down the victim who refused to back down against the three suspects. Yeah, he certainly did not back down, Craig. He was mowing the lawn here at this business when he says the man tried to steal his $2,200 lawnmower out from underneath him. He fought back, they fought back, and then the cops caught him just up the street. We caught up with Eduardo Bazell cutting the grass at this old Alabama road business. Last Saturday, he was doing the same thing when he saw this Penske truck. And I see they come for the truck. Two times. Zell says he spotted the men inside loading this lawnmower into the back. And hey, what happened? This is my machine. So he actually approached the two men, and um, when he did, a fight ensued. He was actually swung at with a, uh, a stick, and the stick missed him, but the other person ended up punching him in the face. This is my work. I needed that one. Dash cam video from a Johns Creek patrol car shows officers pull Dexter Bowen, Travis Hall, and Shamel Glover over just up the street from the robbery location. All three men are now facing armed robbery charges. Well, that was pretty bold for them to get out and, uh, you know, uh, uh, to get out in the middle of the day. This is the afternoon time and to steal from this person. Didn't take long for Johns Creek police to spot the men, and they don't recommend doing what Bizell did if you find yourself in the same situation. You know, we never recommend that you get involved. If you saw this person stealing, he got in a struggle and he could have been seriously hurt by these people. And police tell me they're looking into whether this trio is behind other similar attacks in the metro area. All three of them remain in the Fulton County Jail. Live in North Fulton County, Roswell, I'm Mike Pachenik, Channel 2 Action News. A heads up now if you have outdoor plans this evening because showers are starting to fire up on Storm Tracker 2 HD radar. Chief Meteorologist Glenn Burns is live in Severe Weather Center 2. They sure are windy and the heaviest rain that we've seen so far here in the eastern part of Henry County. Now moving up toward the southern part of Newton County to the south of Covington. There you see that locally heavy rain is kind of training on itself. We have several big areas of rain that are moving over the top of the other. So we could see some locally heavy rain pile up there. Griffin, we're seeing some moderate downpours here. Then we mostly light rain showers, but you occasionally get one of these heavy downpours. Moving right along I-85 here, eastern Troop County, just to the east of West Point Lake, southwestern part of Coweta County, also seeing a heavy downpour there, moving to the northeast at about 15 miles per hour. And you can see some scattered showers here in Paulding County and down into Carroll County. As we look into Carroll County here, we have some locally heavy rainfall running just to the south of I-20 here to the west that is moving toward the east-northeast at about 15 to 20. That's going to put it over toward uh, five points in about five minutes. Sand Hill, nine minutes away from you. So, a brief period of some locally heavy rainfall, possibly a clap of thunder. Heading out tonight, we will see a chance for an isolated shower, 80 degrees at 7 p.m. By 9 o'clock, we'll see a chance for an isolated shower, 77 degrees. And by 11 o'clock, mainly dry and 75. Tomorrow, an approaching cold front. We've got new data on that coming up with Brad Nitz at 5. Glenn, thank you. Now, new developments. Investigators say a woman murdered her husband, then took her own life inside of a house with young children. It happened in Forsyth County off Memphis Street, and police explained to Channel 2's Taisha Fernandez how police found them. They lived here about three years. 
Tiana Dyer woke up to several Forsyth County deputies investigating her neighbor's home on Memphis Street. Police said around 4 a.m., a family friend called 911 and asked police to check on the couple who lives in the home after she got a call that concerned her. Sir, Investigators found a man and a woman dead. We're including them when they're quiet people. I mean, they really keep to themselves. My daughter goes to school with one of their sons. Police said they found two children under 10 years old standing in the doorway of the home unharmed. Relatives are taking care of them now. We saw investigators collecting evidence with hazmat suits on, so we asked police why they were taking that kind of precaution. Well, because of the uh, two deaths inside the house, we want to make sure that our uh, detectives, our deputies, and the firemen are in suits so that uh, the different things inside the house, uh, primarily the deaths, uh, they're safe. Police said they've been called to the house several times before, but they were all for nonviolent issues. Neighbors said paramedics would always show up. Investigators assured us that this neighborhood does not need to worry about a murderer on the loose. No, this, this area is safe. Uh, we do believe that the crimes that were committed earlier this morning were contained in this house. In Forsyth County, Taisha Fernandez, Channel 2 Action News. New developments in a wild story where police say two women attacked a waitress. Today, a Henry County judge scheduled LaSandra and Katera Boyd back in court next week. Investigators say the pair and two other family members attacked an Applebee's server last month. Police say they stabbed the victim with a steak knife and then stole all Look at the surveillance video right here showing the fight. The waitress did survive this attack. A family is hoping the community can help police find the hit and run driver who killed a man walking to a local store. They didn't have the decency to turn around or come back. I don't know if it was because they were scared. Now, police say someone hit Ronnie Ridley earlier this month near University Avenue and Pryor Street in southwest Atlanta. The family told us a witness saw a man drive away, but investigators say that that driver did not hit Ridley. Now, if you do have any information that could help out investigators, here's the number to call Crime Stoppers at 404-577-TIPS. Again, 404-577-8477. And always remember, you can remain anonymous and still be eligible for a reward. Now, new developments. The Trump administration is moving to ease rules on coal-fired power plants. It'll let states have more control over greenhouse gas emissions. The new plan will let states relax rules on pollution from power plants. This is a key reversal of the Obama administration's climate policy. The plan is expected to be announced in the coming days. Scientists expect the move will lead to a surge in carbon emissions. You could have to pay more in property taxes in part of Cherokee County. Woodstock city leaders announced plans to raise property taxes nearly 2.5%. You can weigh in during a public hearing tonight at 7 o'clock. There will be another one on Monday. Uh, leaders plan to vote on the proposal exactly one week from today. We have new information so that you can make better investment decisions. New at 4, Channel 2's consumer advisor, Clark Howard, walks you through the fund that could earn you the most. Do I have an amazing deal for you? You know, anytime somebody says you're getting something for nothing, you automatically assume, what's the catch? There's got to be a scam. But there actually is now completely fee-free investing. And it's from a company called Fidelity Investments, a huge financial organization. And they have two funds now that you can put your money into that you pay no commissions to go into and no fees for being in the funds. They're both what are known as index funds, which is one of my favorite ways for you to get started with investing. There's no minimum to do it. One of them is what's called a total stock market fund, where your money goes in thousands of different stocks. And the other is an international fund. And having that combination buys you the U.S. and much of the world. I love this for you to be able to get started with investing or grow your investments without having to pay anybody anything at all. Why does Fidelity do this? to try to attract you as a customer and get you to buy other things from them. But you don't have to. I'm Clark Howard. You know, at four, it is a good day for University of Georgia football fans. The new poll ranks the Bulldogs in the top five ahead of the new college football season. The preseason Associated Press Top 25 poll came out today. The Alabama Crimson Tide earned the top spot, followed by Clemson. Georgia is ranked number three in this brand new poll. Wisconsin is fourth, followed by Ohio State.
A deadly alligator attack where many of you vacation. New at five, a woman was killed on Hilton Head Island, but emergency workers believe the gator was after something else. And only one county in Georgia was selected for highly specialized training to keep you safe from a coordinated attack, and it is right here in the metro area. The takeaways to keep you safe, that's next. Today at 5. Henry County is the first county here in Georgia to be selected for highly specialized training to handle a coordinated attack on its residents. This afternoon, we met with the county's emergency management director who explained what they learned to handle events like school shootings and natural disasters. It's so important that we get at the same table and have the same discussion and share the same language and thoughts about how we deal with something as a whole. Don Ash is Henry County's Emergency Management Agency Director. He shared these pictures of him and his team of 53 people learning emergency techniques from the country's top Homeland Security experts. Ash took officials from Hampton, Locust Grove, McDonough, and Stockbridge. We talked about our strengths, but we also talked about our gaps. And so moving forward, we have some direction on areas we need to focus. As a group, they traveled to Maryland this month for specialized FEMA training on how to handle coordinated attacks, school shootings, and different types of natural disasters. The trip didn't cost taxpayers too much either. FEMA picked up the costs, all the related travel costs. I think the only thing we paid for was our meal plans for our employees. So that was significant savings. Henry County is the first county in the state of Georgia to be selected for the training called the Integrated Emergency Management Course by FEMA. It's held at the National Training Academy in Emmitsburg, Maryland, helping those who are in critical emergency positions. The biggest takeaway was having us together, communicating and talking and breaking down barriers. Now, the training was a week long, and the emergency director says that they will receive a report from FEMA on their performance. He said it's already helped them rework their future disaster exercise plans. Justin. Straight ahead at 5 on Channel 2 Action News. Parents are stunned this former teacher of the year is facing charges. He's accused of throwing a stool at a student. If you're a teacher, you're supposed to lead and teach these kids. New at 5, police say a water bottle set him off. Women targeted for crime at gas stations as they fill up their cars. A psychiatrist walks me through how she became a victim and has a warning for other women. Today. Live, local, late breaking. This is Channel 2 Action News at 5 p.m. Coverage you can count on. New at 5, parents are stunned. A former teacher of the year is accused of hitting a student with a stool. That's beyond corporal punishment. That's assault. The shock for parents when they learned officers took that teacher to jail. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jovita Moore. I'm Justin Farmer, and police say the middle school teacher lost his temper and threw a stool at a student. Parents are now blasting that teacher. Channel 2's Cobb County Bureau Chief Chris Jose live in Marietta. And Chris, police are saying the teacher physically harmed that 13-year-old. Right, that's what this police report right here says. A spokeswoman with the Cobb County School District told me the former teacher of the year is no longer employed. That's beyond corporal punishment. That's assault. When you throw a chair at a kid. This is Maurice Simmons' mugshot from the Cobb County Jail. Some parents were shocked to learn the 2017 Teacher of the Year from Lindley Middle School allegedly harmed a student. I don't know where his state of mind was at, but that's not acceptable for any any teacher in any situation. According to an arrest warrant I obtained, Simmons was sitting down during hall duty and lost his temper when a student placed a cold water bottle on the back of Simmons' neck. Police say Simmons got off the stool and threw it at the student, which hit the 13-year-old in the stomach. I'm not saying that that's right, but, you know, that's, that's what you do as a kid. But to retaliate by throwing a chair back and you're the adult, you're the role model. I've learned the investigating officer interviewed four teachers who confirmed the student's statement. We found out Simmons lives in Douglasville. I knocked on his door, but nobody answered. If you're a teacher, you're supposed to lead and teach these kids. In a short statement, a district spokesperson told me the teacher is no longer employed with the Cobb County School District. The spokesperson would not tell me if Simmons, a now former PE teacher, resigned or if he was Fire. That's unacceptable, throwing chairs at, at, at kids. Simmons is charged with simple battery. He was arrested last Thursday. Joe records show he is free on bond. Live in Cobb County, Marietta, Chris Jose, Channel 2 Action News.
And there are storms popping up across the metro area this hour. They could impact your evening. Channel 2's meteorologist Brad Nitz is live in severe weather center 2. Showers, storms, wet roads this time of day. And of course, that could slow down traffic, no doubt about it. Some ponding on the roads possibility. Scattered showers, but when you look closely here, look at this. Pockets of some real heavy downpours approaching Dallas now, approaching Douglas, moving out of Carroll and into western Douglas County. Some cloud to ground lightning with this thunderstorm over Villa Rica, and it's moving along I-20. So we're going to track this as it moves east. East towards Douglasville here, moving at about 15 miles an hour. Already some showers in these spots, but this is the time of arrival of the thunderstorm with the heavy rain. Winston in three minutes, White City in eight, Douglasville about 21 minutes before the thunderstorm makes it to you, and Chapel Hill in 25 minutes. You can expect not just heavy downpours, which can lead to some ponding on the roads, but some clouded ground lightning with that as well. As we go back to the southwest, heavy rain impacting travel certainly along I-85 and Coweta and parts of Troop and Meriwether counties, and then along I-75 impact to traffic, no question about it. Traffic in Henry County this time of day on I-75 is always a problem, but you act, add rain to it, and I expect some impacts from that as well. As we head through this evening and tomorrow, more showers and thunderstorms. I'll take you through the timeline. We'll be wet when we'll be dry and looking ahead towards a cold front later this week. Coming up. New at 5, these are targeting women at gas stations. The latest victim's a psychiatrist who devotes time to helping prison inmates. And she tells us the thieves even showed up at her home today after that initial crime. Channel 2's Tom Regan live in southwest Atlanta. Tom, you learned that this is a crime that's become rampant across metro Atlanta. Justin, a growing number of people, especially women, are being victimized by this crime. Here's basically how it works. As you're filling up your tank on this side of the car, the thief quietly carefully sneaks around to the other side of the car and quietly opens the door snatches your belongings and it can take just a matter of seconds dr angela shannon a psychiatrist showed me how a sneaky thief snatched her tote bag from her car as she was filling up you know pop my thing and i'm watching my you know passenger side because that's where my purse is. But a moment later, someone snuck up, opened the driver's side door, and grabbed the tote. She spotted him getting ready to climb back into his getaway car. He was literally doing like this and, cr and opened the door. He hadn't even gotten in. And I said, stop. The three men took off. Before she could cancel her credit cards, she said they racked up $2,800 in gift card purchases at two Kroger stores. She said the stores should have been more suspicious. Why didn't they ask for the ID of the person who was making these fraudulent charges? And to make matters worse, the thieves came to her home. This morning, as my husband gets up to go to work, he discovers that his truck has been broken into and his wallet taken and now they're charging things on him. A day before she was robbed, slider thieves stole from another woman at the same gas station. Atlanta police posted a warning sign not to leave belongings in the car and to lock doors. Angela never left her car. She told other customers to be careful. To let them know to really be on the lookout because you never could have told me that it would have happened to me. Dr. Shannon and I went into this convenience store to find out if there's any surveillance video of the crime available. I'm putting that part of the story together for Channel 2 Action News at 6. Live in southwest Atlanta, Tom Regan, Channel 2 Action News. Students starting school at Georgia State are now dealing with gunfire on campus for the second time in just a matter of days. Police are looking into a shootout between officers and a suspect near a dorm last night. Officers say they were checking a call about drug activity when someone started shooting while getting away. They fired back. Police say that suspect also tried to carjack a student. Students say this lockdown has made them more aware. That story coming up live in the next 15 minutes. Happening now, crews are searching a lake in Bartow County for evidence. Now, in the past hour, News Chopper 2 flew over Alatoona Lake. The Bartow County Sheriff's Office tells us the case is several years old, but right now they are not releasing any other information about their search. We'll bring you any new developments during this newscast. An argument in a Walmart parking lot led to the shooting death of a man, but it is not being called murder. Here's a picture of the customer who died, a father who family members told us came to America to escape a war torn nation. Channel 2's Gwinnett County Bureau Chief Tony Thomas live in Snellville with why the suspect is only facing voluntary manslaughter charges. Tony. Justin, as I reported this case, I pulled the warrant for suspect Tory Hunt. In it, a Snellville detective outright says this incident would normally have been a case of murder. But in this specific incident, authorities believe the suspect was provoked. 
provoked in this parking lot after his girlfriend got into an argument with another customer. Hi, looking for Ms. Austin. When I contacted suspect Troy Hunt's girlfriend by phone, she didn't want, at this point at least, to discuss what happened. But Snellville police say she had begun arguing with victim Fadil Delkic over how close Delkic's car came to her as her family walked in this Walmart parking lot Sunday. Delkic got out and she allegedly slapped him. Almost immediately after that hit, uh, her fiance pulled a weapon and fired a shot. Authorities charged the 28 year old Hunt with voluntary manslaughter. In an arrest warrant, a detective described the reasoning this way Hunt killed Delkic under circumstances that would otherwise be murder but accused acted solely as a result of a sudden violent and irresistible passion resulting from serious provocation. So everybody started running, holding your head, yelling, they stole, so the whole store was upside down. The shooting sent customers both inside and out the scenic highway store running for cover. It kind of like gave me kind of like a flashback, back to combat. The voluntary manslaughter charge is a felony. Hunt is being held without bond. The guy was sitting in the car, so the police did grab him. Okay. And because um, the guy did not leave the scene. Now, two of victim Delkic's uh, children live overseas. While en route, one of his daughters messaged me today saying, in part, the amount of sorrow we are going through is indescribable. My father was loved by everyone, and the minute he died, the hearts of thousands were broken. Live in Gwinnett County, Tony Thomas, Channel 2 Action News. New at 5, the West Nile virus is now a risk in Gwinnett County. Health, the county's health department says this afternoon that a resident is recovering from the illness. Mosquitoes transmit the virus, as you know, and health officials say you can prevent bites by getting rid of any standing water around your home. In DeKalb County, health officials are warning people to take precaution after dozens of mosquitoes tested positive for the virus. They say 59 mosquitoes came back positive for West Nile. DeKalb County says the mosquitoes were trapped in 21 different locations this year. Critics are calling a plan to consolidate polling places in one Georgia county a blatant attempt to suppress certain voters. But as Channel 2's Richard Elliott reports from Randolph County, supporters say that the county is breaking the law by keeping those polling places open. Randolph is not a particularly big county. There's only about 7,000 people total, about 60% of that African American. So when an election consultant proposed to close seven of nine polling places, people noticed. A plan that doesn't take into account for the impact on the community. Marshall Jones grew up in Randolph County and takes her voting very seriously. So when an election consultant proposed a plan to close seven of nine polling places, she didn't like it. She worries it'll hurt elderly voters. I wouldn't say discrimination, but in a way it is because older people can't get to the polls. Randolph County hired Mike Malone as an elections consultant. And after looking at things, he proposed closing seven precincts. He says the county wastes money on nine polling places with only 4,000 registered voters. And seven of those places, he says, are in violation of federal law because they are not ADA compliant. In the video of this meeting, he told a group of voters that this has nothing to do with voter suppression. That is the absolute mm -hmm. farthest thing mm -hmm. from the fact that there is. But critics insist closing the polls will cause voter suppression. Bobby White grew up in Randolph County, too. She's okay with closing polling places to save the county money, but only if someone comes up with a plan to get voters affected by the closures to the polls. It can be good for economy. I mean, you know, saving that way. But it's going to be rough on the few places that have the few people that don't have a way to get to the voting places. The Secretary of State's office said it really doesn't have a lot of control over what the Randolph County Elections Board does. However, it also said it sent them a note saying it staunchly opposed the closing of these polls. In Randolph County, Richard Elliott, Channel 2 Action News. Tracking showers and thunderstorms moving through the western part of metro Atlanta and pushing east else will have impact on your evening plans. I'll take you through that part of the forecast hour by hour coming up. A Georgia man arrested for burglary. Police got the wrong guy. There are a lot of flaws in our system, and this is one that just snagged this kid big time. New at 5, the mistake that left him in jail for a month and how it could easily happen to you. A mother hit and killed as her boyfriend was backing out of their driveway. You believe it was an accident? No, not, not now. New this hour, her family wants him arrested. Live next.